Hi everybody! In this video, I would like to demonstrate how we can create a simple effect for the background of our space game. It will be a moving star field that we can adjust with various parameters. Let's get started. As usual, I'll start by reminding you that I'm working in Godot 4. However, this shader is very simple and can be easily converted for other game engines. So we have the editor open and I'm going to create a new scene and name it Starfield. Right click, create new scene, Starfield, okay. In this scene, I'll add a color rect as a child node and set its dimensions to 600 by 400 pixels, as I do in every video. Uh, right click, add child node, color rect, and in the inspector, layout, transform size, 600, 400. And as we know, uh, we will finish these preparatory steps by creating a new shader material right here. Material, new shader material, and click and add a new shader into it. That should be canvas item, Starfield GD shader, and we'll put it to the shaders folder. And create, and click it to open it in the shader editor. Very well. We'll start by uh, deleting what, is, what isn't what is necessary, leaving only the fragment function. Wait and light. Before I write code into this fragment function, I'll prepare a uniform parameter named resolution, whose value corresponds to the dimensions of our color act. This will help us calculate the correct aspect ratio as we can see, we are not working with a square, but with a rectangle. So it would be this uniform vector resolution. And the default value would be set to 600 and 400. Okay, great. We can write the basics of the fragment function. I usually start by recalculating the aspect ratio and assigning a temporary color, such as black, to the current pixel. Let's write the corresponding code and once I'm done with that, I'll explain it. So delete the comment and vec2 uv is capital UV, uvx multiplied by is resolution x divided by resolution y and now fold stars and is zero and the final color would be vector four containing vector three of this stars value and to one for the alpha channel all right a few notes on this code UV coordinates are normalized, meaning their values range from 0 to 1, with 0, 0 corresponding to the top left corner and 1, 1 to the bottom right corner. You might remember that in some previous videos I subtracted 0.5 here to move the origin to the center, but this time it's not necessary because we will be creating a continuous moving effect that has no beginning or end. Secondly, we'll be creating stars that should be as spherical as possible. That's why we have the aspect ratio right here recalculated. If we didn't do this, the stars would appear as ellipses. And a final note, the resulting color has four components, red, green, blue and the alpha channel. So I usually define a temporary color as a vector 3 or vector 4. This time we'll manage with a float value because all the stars will be white with varying brightness and for that shades of grey where all color components are the same will suffice. 
I apologize if you've heard this introduction or a variation of it several times in previous videos. On the other hand, I think it's helpful to reiterate those details, especially if you've only just come across my channel today. We are now at the end of the introduction, so let's get started on the Starfield. From the Starfield, we expect a somewhat irregular or chaotic character, as overly irregular and frequently repeating star constellations would somewhat spoil the gaming experience. We can use two methods to generate pseudo-chaos. Either we could implement a noise function, which I've used several times in previous videos, or we could utilize a noise texture, which Godot can easily generate for us. Let's see how we can do it the second way, which is a noise texture. And uh, we'll add a uniform parameter that will give us access to such a texture for our calculation. A uniform sampler 2D for the image, noise texture, and I'll add these palm parameters, filter nearest, and repeat enable. What do these parameters mean? Eh, sorry, semicolon. What do they mean? I've used filter nearest to ensure that each star is displayed on the nearest pixel, even if its coordinates fall between pixels. And repeat enable to repeat the texture endlessly, which is necessary for our effect. However, we don't have anything here yet, so let's create a texture in the inspector. Here it is, shaders, parameters, and noise texture is empty. I'll open it and set a new noise texture 2D, click it. Let's keep all the parameters as they are and set the noise parameter to fa new fast noise light. Click it again and we can see something here. It, it created a simplex smooth noise but uh, this isn't quite suitable for our purpose so let's replace it, it with simplex that would be much better and we also need to uh, adjust the frequency let's set it to something like 0.35 to make it a bit grainy yeah something like this we can change it later if we don't like the resulting star field but for now this will suffice so, how do we use this texture in our calculation? Let's add the following line, which will read the pixel value of the texture at the current UV coordinates and add it to the variable stars. So, stars would be increased by the function texture, reading the noise texture, eh, sorry, noise texture at the UV coordinates. And of course, texture function returns a vector 4, but we want just a float, so let's take only the red component. Okay, here we go. Uh, so far, we're displaying the generated texture without any changes. We can directly show what happens when we remove repeat enable from the uniform parameter definition. Wait for it. Yeah, we definitely don't want this, so let's revert it back. And continue. The issue with this chaos is that it contains too many non-zero values, which manifest as these dense areas of gray dots. Let's demonstrate a simple trick to extract only the brightest from such noise. For this, the POW, short for power, function works well, which allows us to transform most gray dots into values so close to zero that they'll be practically invisible. This is best explained with a graph. So I've just opened this extremely useful and free tool called the Desmos Calculator, and I'll start with a simple X function, which is just this line. But as I said, we want to use the power function. So to the power of two, it is this kind of parabolic graph. And we can see that already the values close to zero are getting closer to zero and the values close to one, which is uh, the white color, are being a bit emphasized, but not enough. What if we change it to, let's say, five? Much better. Can you see how it is very, very close to zero? 
I think we can get even better results with, I guess that 20 is the best value. And this is exactly the kind of filter we will apply in our shader. We will just filter out everything in this range and use only these stars. Let's get back to Godot and do that. So it means uh, we need to apply the pow, power function to this result of the texture and the exponent would be something and I think it would be great to create a new uniform parameter for this. I'll call it density. So let's just prepare it here and define it over there. Uniform float density. Let's give it a hint range from one to let's try 100. Why not? And point one as the step. And as I demonstrated on the graph, we will start with 20 as the default value. Wait for it. Perfect. Let me just enlarge. Yeah, we got a much better star field now. If it were just a static field, you could almost say that we are done. However, our goal is to make the field dynamic and in several parallax layers. So we'll perform another calculation to get stars of as similar brightness as possible. For this, the step function is perfect as it filters out everything below a certain value. So let's improve it by the step, fu uh, step function with the threshold, let's say 0.2 and, and bracket. Very nice. We have one layer, increase, decrease, okay. We have one layer and before we add another, let's try to animate it. And because we want a star field that can move in any direction, let's add two new uniform parameters, speed X and speed Y. Uniform flow speed X and hint range. Okay, and now we need to start at the negative part because we want direction in both. We want to move them in both directions to the left and to the right. Okay, and I think we can start at 20 in the X direction and for Y uniform float speed Y hint range and uh, let's do the same negative 100 and positive 100 point 0.1 and because our initial movement would be just horizontal the Y speed let's start with zero all right now using the internal variable time we'll calculate the current velocity vector and use it in our algorithm. Do it here. Vector two, let's call it speed. It would be time multiplied by vector two of our uniform parameters, speed x, speed y. And to apply that, we just add it to the UV coordinates. Ah, <laughs> okay, that's way too fast. Let's decrease the value by a hundredfold. So where we calculate the speed, let's multiply that by 0 0.01. Well done. We can play around uh, with the sliders now and try movement in all directions. Let's increase, for example, Y. Yes, or move it to the negative numbers perfect i think it works cool by the way you may observe some flickering of the star field which is probably caused by the video compression however in the game itself it should be perfectly smooth as i can see it right now in front of me all right how do we add more layers we'll start by adding a uniform parameter to define their number i'll do it here uniform float layers with the hint range uh, from 1 to 
10 should be enough because since we will be working with the brightness, um, smaller values, uh, higher values would practically result in invisible stars. So that could be okay. And let's define five layers. And now we'll put our calculation into a for loop, this one. So for uh, float i from zero to layers and it's increased by one in every iteration and put this into the cycle <clears throat> very well of course uh, nothing has changed because all layers are displayed exactly the same and overlap each other we'll solve this problem by making each subsequent layer move a bit slower and its stars will have lower brightness to achieve a spatial effect. Let's do it. So what we need to change here is to multiply this speed by this formula. One minus I multiplied by 0.1. Wait. Okay, something is happening. This is not exactly it, but it's a good start. Uh, and this is the first step. Now let's decrease the brightness. So first we need to define it. I'll do it here. Float brightness is, and we'll use a similar formula like before, one minus i multiplied by, for example, 0.2. And the final color should be uh, multiplied by this brightness. Okay, we are almost there. There is one more detail. All layers are exactly the same. Speaking of the star, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, speaking of the star distribution. So even though they move at different speeds, after a while they merge again and it doesn't look good. So we'll solve this by applying an initial offset to each layer in the X and Y directions. I will define it here as a float shift that would be i multiplied by 0.2 to make a different offset for each layer and now we only need to apply it and we will do it simply by adding to the UV shift. Perfect and we're done. We have a nice star field that we can control from our game by adjusting parameters. For instance, we could make the stars follow the current direction of our spaceship if we wanted. I think it has quite a wide range of applications. So for instance, if I change the number of layers, decrease it, stars are, get, are disappearing. Let's get back and six, seven, yeah, it's no longer visible. So not necessary to use more than five layers and let's put it to full stop and increase for example the y a uh, different direction this could be for example a space shooter from uh, my tutorial when the ship is uh, moving from the bottom to top and let's put it back to the initial value, we can uh, play with the density, of course, decrease the number of stars or increase it to some very dense star field, just as we want. Thank you for watching. As always, there are many ways to improve this shader. We could color each star with a random color or select them from a specific palette. We could change the black background to something more interesting and so on. I'll publish the source code along with further information on my Patreon account. Anyway, uh, have a great time and I'll see you in the next video.